And now, let me, uh, let me get things started by saying a few things and then turn to you for questions that you have. You know what a meeting like this is supposed to do, not just have me do all the talking. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn to you and get things started. I, I, uh, I want to say, first of all, how much I appreciated the comments from both of the women who got us started in this effort today. Uh, Jennifer spoke very eloquently about the principles, the founding principles of our country. And I, and I know that there are some who, who think those are principles that were designed for an ancient time and that their relevance is past. And, and that we should chart a new course. President Obama uh, has spoken of a fundamental transformation that he would bring to America. Uh, I, uh, I, I believe in the principles that the nation was founded upon and believe they have enduring value for this country and, and believe that efforts to cha change those basic principles are efforts that would be very, very misguided indeed. And I appreciate, Jennifer, your bringing that to people's attention here today. And I also would want to say thank you to Dr. McGoy for her effort going around the country campaigning about that piece of legislation. Look at the size of that thing. That is really, uh, let's see. Let's see. We, we, we passed a, a bill in Massachusetts you've heard of. Oh, there, there it is, right there. This isn't it, but it's about the same size. Our bill was 70 pages. That's the 20 page bill. That's the 20 page. Ours was about, all right, so it was about. Uh, just about three times, a little more than three times the, the width of that. That was the bill that we passed in our state, not this thing. And uh, so I give this back to you, yeah. Only till next year. <laughs> Only till next year. We get rid of that thing. Think of all the paper we'll save. Think of all the paper we'll save. It, it's interesting that, that we had a, a president and members of his party that, that despite the overwhelming response from the people of America saying, do not pass this thing. Why, we even elected a Republican senator in Massachusetts saying, don't pass that thing. And yet they went ahead and pushed it through, and the American people, I'm convinced, are going to say, we want a president that will repeal Obamacare and return health care and the care for the poor back to the states rather than having the federal government impose a one-size-fits-all plan on the entire nation. I, I agree with what she said. She got up here and spoke eloquently on this topic. I, what, what she said, that's what I'd like to say. Just, she said it better than I do. And I, and I want you to understand that I, I fully support that effort to repeal that piece of legislation and return to the people and to, the, and to doctors and to states' responsibility for health care. Now, let me just uh, go back to the topic that I began with. What happened to Jennifer? She's already left. <laughs> She'll be back. Uh, there are a couple principles that I want to mention, and that is, I, I spoke about the president wanting to fundamentally transform America. Let me describe in one way I think that's, that's happening. I happen to believe that one of the principles of this country that's helped make us such a successful and, and dynamic nation, and the richest in the world, most powerful in the world, the strongest economy, it is the sense or the recognition that we are a, a merit-based society. In a merit-based society, people are able to achieve various forms of success or realize their dreams based upon the education they can find for themselves, the hard work they engage in, the, uh, the willingness that they take to, to uh, uh, make risks, take risks, uh, their willingness to try and fulfill their dreams, and some people are, are extraordinary, like Steve Jobs, who passed away not long ago. Gosh, what an extraordinary person. A dreamer who took risks, dropped out of school to go off and, and achieve his dreams, and, uh, and by virtue of what he did, why a lot of us uh, are able to communicate a lot better, and a lot more people are able to have good jobs and, and thank people like that for what they were able to do. It's a merit-based society that we've had, where people are able to pursue their dreams, and the rewards of those dreams they receive, and all of us receive, because as they're successful and build enterprises, they lift all of us who get to work for them. But the president and I think people around him have a different view. They want to transform America into an entitlement society. Where everybody is entitled to certain things from government, which means from other people. And so the job of government then becomes taking from some people and giving to the others. And in a setting like that, you have a certainty of, of a greater degree of equality, but you also have a certainty of poverty. Because every time that's been tried, where people say, I'm going to take away from those who, who build and create and give to those who have not, you have societies that fail economically. 
and whether it's Cuba or, or, uh, or North Korea or the old Soviet Union, those systems don't work. What has been proven to work time and time again is free people choosing free enterprises of their own kind to lift themselves, their family, and their neighbors. And that's what makes America such a powerful engine. And when, and when the founders drafted the Declaration of Independence, they chose words with great care, as you know. They said that our rights were not given to us by government, but instead were given to us by our Creator. We have been endowed with certain unalienable rights. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The pursuit of happiness means the ability to pursue happiness in the way we choose. It's opportunity. This is an opportunity nation, a merit-based nation, where we're able to pursue our dreams. And the government does not stand between us and our dreams. The government instead is, in, is, is uh, installed to encourage us to achieve what we can, person after person. The government is not who guides the economy and the lives of the American people. The government instead encourages them with their freedom to achieve whatever they might. This is the nature of America. It, it's a. Uh, I know that ma many people think, no, no, wouldn't it just be better if we could just all have the same stuff and and, and we just and we'll just give everybody what everyone else has, and 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 I and I know there's some who are very convinced by that, but it's never worked. It's never worked as a system, because the people who end up with the most are then the government people, the ones who do the distributing. The right course for America is freedom. The right course for America is opportunity. The right course for America is to recognize. That when the founders said that the Creator endowed us with life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, they were right. And the liberals and President Obama's people who don't agree with that are wrong. <laughs> with the passage of time, I've become more and more enamored with the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States and the wisdom of the founding fathers. I, uh, I, I read, uh, oh, a few years ago, the book by uh, David McCullen on, uh, on John Adams. Any of you read that book? Just as you saw the letters going back and forth between John and Abigail Adams and, and the discussions they had, the, the, the brilliance to recognize the, 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 the power of the, of the shape of government they created, a government with checks and balances that would not overwhelm the American people, but allow us to maintain our freedom. One of those was uh, one of my favorite amendments, the Tenth Amendment. Anybody who's had the occasion of working in state government uh, typically falls in love with the Tenth Amendment. And it says this, powers not specifically granted to the federal government are reserved for the states and the people. And what's happened with Obamacare is that the federal government, which it does not have an enumerated power, to provide health care for the poor in the country or to mandate health insurance to the country. The federal government under, the, under President Obama has trampled on the Tenth Amendment and said, we, the federal government, are now going to take away that right from the citizens and from the states. And that's why, in my view, this bill is unconstitutional and why that law now is unconstitutional and must be repealed. And by the way, how I'll do that? Well, if we have a Republican House and Senate, well, we can do it through simple repeal. Uh, I'll move very quickly on day one. I'll direct the Secretary of Health and Human Services to grant a waiver from Obamacare to every state, and then we'll go actually get, get repealed in Congress. Now, let me say one more thing. I, I think our president and people around him take their political inspiration from the Social Democrats of Europe. And they have a view there that a heavy-handed government could do a better job of guiding the lives of its citizens and, and the enterprises that they form than can free people pursuing their own dreams. I don't think Europe is working in Europe. I know it won't work here. I believe in America. I believe in a merit-based society. I believe in freedom. I believe in opportunity. And I believe in the extraordinary greatness of this land proven over centuries. No other land, no other people in the world have sacrificed as much or as often for the liberty of themselves and for others 
as the United States of America. It broke my heart to watch the president apologize for America around the world. Yeah. This is the greatest nation in the history of the earth. So with that introduction, Jennifer, I'm going to have you. Go, oh, you got to the microphone. That's what you, you went to get. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah. It's just like at home.